Hello family, we thank the Lord for today. We give him glory and honour for his loving kindness and his protection over our lives. Today I'm reading Genesis chapter 39 from verse 10 to verse 18. And so it was that she spoke to Joseph persistently day after day, but he did not listen to her plea to lie beside her or be with her. Then it happened one day that Joseph went into the house to attend to his duties and none of the men of the household was there in the house. She caught Joseph by his outer robe, saying, Lie with me. But he left his robe in her hand and ran, and got outside the house. When she saw that he had left his robe in her hand and ran, had run outside, she called to the men of her household and said to them, Look at this. Your master has brought a Hebrew, please take note of the word, a Hebrew, into the household to mock and insult us. He came to me to lie with me and I screamed when he heard me screaming he left his robe with me and ran outside the house so she left Joseph's outer robe beside her until his master came home then she told her husband the same story saying the Hebrew servants whom you brought among us came to me to mock and insult me then as soon as I raised my voice and screamed he left his robe with me and ran outside the house today I want to share with you that when all else fails, your enemy might use words to belittle you or to bring you down. This passage of scripture I had shared or read yesterday and we came to realize that one of the main reasons, in fact the fundamental reason why Potiphar's wife persistently tried to, get, to seduce Joseph was because the Bible made it clear in verse 6 of Genesis 39, that it was because Joseph was handsome and attractive in form and appearance. And so the Bible tells us that she persistently tried to persuade Joseph. When she realized that her persistence and her persuasion was not getting anywhere, perhaps feeling that she didn't want to or be belittled or be scorned if maybe the truth went out she concocts the story to flip the whole thing around so that it looks as though Joseph was the one who had initiated um, approaching his master's wife and so the bible tells us from the passage I've read today that she calls the men of the household and when she calls them in describing Joseph She says to them that the Hebrew servant, your master, has brought into this household, came in to mock and insult us. This is the first time that we have an account that makes us know that Potiphar and his wife at least knew the identity of Joseph. They knew his race. They knew his background. They knew that he was a Hebrew. Prior to this, there was no mention of it whatsoever. And when the uh, husband, Potiphar's wife's husband, in other words, when Potiphar returned and she was relaying the story that she had concocted, again, she uses the phrase, the Hebrew servants whom you brought among us. Why is that significant? It is significant because the Bible makes us understand that in that era, Egyptians did not hold Hebrews in high esteem. They did not have any regard for them whatsoever. However, it's interesting that because the blessing of the Lord God was upon Joseph, because the Lord God caused whatever that was put in his hands to prosper, to flourish, I'm sure in whatever it is that Potiphar did to find out why this servant, this slave in his household was so blessed and in in trying to ascertain why that was, I believe it was perhaps in that process that he came to realize that Joseph was a Hebrew. But it did not seem to matter to him at all because of the value, because of the fact that the Bible made it clear that everything that Potiphar had in his house, in his field, was being blessed because of Joseph. So even though the Egyptians did not hold the Hebrew people in high esteem, because of the blessing that Joseph was to him, he didn't have a problem at all. 
even to the point of promoting Joseph to be his second in command, to be his personal assistant for the Bible makes us understand that everything that Potiphar had, he had placed in the care of Joseph. However, because Potiphar's wife had a plan, she wanted Potiphar to stand by her, by hook or crook, to believe her story and so that Joseph would get the highest form of punishment, she resorted to bring into fall his identity, to kind of rub it in, in her conversation with the men of the household and in the conversation with her husband to say that, look, after all, this person is nothing really. Why do I know that they considered him to be nothing? I just want to quickly read a passage of scripture in Genesis chapter 43, verse 32. It says, So the servant served Joseph by himself in honor of his rank, and his brothers by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves, because, according to custom, the Egyptians could not eat with the Hebrews, for that is loathsome to the Egyptians. This passage I've just read, or cares after Joseph had been promoted to be the prime minister of Egypt, that even in that ranking that he was in, the Egyptians still held on so dear to their custom. They could not shift the fact that Hebrews were not really regarded in their sight to the point where even though Joseph was so blessed and was given such a high ranking position, they still would not even sit with him to eat with him. I want you to picture that for a moment and in our day what that would look like or the different names that we would give to describe a scenario like that. And so when Potiphar then is told that this Hebrew that you brought into this house, it was basically rubbing it in to say, this is why we don't even regard them. You've brought this man into this house. You've given him the highest ranking position in this household forgetting that really and truly he's a nobody. And as I share this, for many of us, we may have experienced this sort of thing in one form or the other. Sometimes we give it all sorts of names. If somebody brings your identity, your cultural background, and they disrespect you, they disregard you for that, there are so many names that we can give to that. But there are times when the enemy who really wants to bring you down might even use words to let you know that you do not matter. They would use words to make you feel you're insignificant, that you don't have any value, that you don't have any worth. And sometimes it happens even in family. Sometimes it happens even among siblings. Sometimes it happens even when parents cannot be kind or speak kindly to their children. Sometimes it happens between spouses. Sometimes it happens between a, a, a boss and and their um, subordinates in an office situation where consistently, because they want to break you and make you feel so worthless, they begin to use words to describe you. And that is what Potiphar's wife sought to do, just so that she could lay the foundation, the seed that would trigger Potiphar into anger and into making a decision that would perhaps cause Joseph to lose his position and we know that he succeeded. And so as I share this today, just as I shared two days ago, that Joseph knew who he was, that his identity when he went into Potiphar's house. When they began to, perhaps uh, when he was called later on, which we will look at tomorrow, by Potiphar and he was asked and so on, He could not really say much because all they kept trying to remind him of was the fact that he really was a nobody who had come into Potiphar's household and Potiphar had tried to make him at least give him some kind of worth, some kind of value by even giving him the position that he gave him, bearing in mind that he was a slave. And so today, I just want you to know that in that moment when this story broke and Joseph was called to give an answer, he probably realized that in as much as he knew who he was and the Lord God had been with him, he probably was shot, lost for words because they did not seek to actually question whether or not he had done it, but they questioned his identity 
and they made belittled him by making reference to the fact that in the end he was a nobody, not just a slave, but he was a Hebrew that the people of Egypt did not have any regard for anyway. And so maybe you're going through a situation similar to what Joseph went through. People may be saying things behind your back and somehow maybe you've had wind of what they've been saying. And perhaps it's broken you a little bit. It's chipped away your confidence. I've experienced things like that. And it's not the most easiest of things to deal with. But I just want you to know that unfortunately, it is nothing new under the sun. But what we need to do is to keep holding on to the promise of God. To keep holding on to the words of God that would cause us to remind ourselves of who God says we are. Rather than who people say we are. Because sometimes the devil knows that the only way he can get to you is by making you feel so worthless. And he does that so well by words that he puts into people's mouths so that they speak that over you or by even words that he puts into your mind. So let's ask God to continually help us to have the right mindset, to be able to let go and to shift certain thoughts that comes into our minds so that we can position ourselves to not let the enemy succeed in bringing us down by the words that he speaks over us or concerning us. Before I go, we're going to go over our memory verse. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us continually, from all unrighteousness, our wrongdoing, everything not in conformity with his will and purpose. The Lord bless you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord give you the courage to be confident in who he has made you in Christ. So that when the enemy comes and he tries to use words to get you down, you'll be able to rise up above it by the power of the Holy Spirit that is at work in you and I. Be blessed and I look forward to sharing with you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.